everyone you're listening to week 26 of monday night chats with daz and i'm looking in the chat and i have to refresh it because it looks like right before i got on air something happened to where i had to sign in and then back out but yeah, that happens, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. I'm trying to figure out what just happened. Yeah. Actually, I was uh, unsubscribed from you, and my account was signed out as well. <laughs> That's so weird. Well, I we got to figure this out because I, I, I got to get back to the chat really fast. I had everything up and ready to go, and then, like, right at 7, 7 p.m., the chat disappeared. I got signed out of, of the account and there was like two of my icon there. Okay, I see the chat is back. Um, hi, Craig. Hi, Nixie. And I'm talking to Ronnie right now. Yes, that's me. Hey, the Limitless Channel. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Um, I do check out your podcasts and they're great. Um, you know, you're always bringing new topics and um searching the scriptures as well as um, looking into odd topics and, and other interesting stuff, right? Yeah. And it's good to have you on. Um, I, I want to start by asking you, how did you get into like the truth or even just like your faith walk? Um, the scriptures, um, I guess, you know, I heard a little bit when I was younger and I went to a bunch of times to church and, you know, you go up and you, give your heart to Jesus and you, you know, you go through that whole process. Most people have probably been through it and, um, you know, cut the grass and help me do the maintenance work for, you know, my, my mother's mother, my nan, she would have the church over and, you know, I wasn't really following it as much as she was, but, you know, she would bring me every now and then. And, but it wasn't until, until I was after the age of 30 and, uh, you know, it was it was the book of Enoch that super impacted me in a huge, huge way. That's really interesting that the book of Enoch was the like extra canonical text that really got you interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without a doubt, it was. Um, I, I didn't question it as being not canonical. I didn't think of it as an outside of a sort of, you know, you know, collection of things. I thought it was all part of it and just fascinated me to hear some of the things that took place and, um, you know, trying to understand them and how modern, how modern the language is in the book is incredible. And, and then I began to notice, you know, all the religions pretty much fighting against it. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely tie even just the story in Enoch to like what happened, not only in the Bible, but even other, you know, different cultures, different religions have stories very similar. Yeah, totally. There, you know, redundant amount of evidence that uh, certain things took place and the timeline's been set out and it's, you know, it's pretty accurate, even though, you know, people try to fool with it and change calendars and dates, but you know, generally, the the motions of life pretty much run at a steady pace, and it's you know we can see it in the stars in the sky, um, and that's kind of what the Book of Enoch really was teaching how this reality kind of works and a message for the future. Um, he was looking forward in time, and I thought I thought that was pretty powerful because there wasn't as much in the sixty six book canon that was prophetic like that, right? So. No, it really is like a mind blowing read. I remember like when I first looked into it, just because kind of like you said, a lot of people fight against, you know, you looking into extra biblical texts and just all of the things that it was predicting. Um, it was like 
kind of um, fulfilling a lot of things you read in the regular Bible, but just in more detail. Totally. That's exactly it. And then, you know, um, further along the path, after I found the, the narrator, Apocryphal 1970, Robert Farrell, I, I got in contact with him um, because like with my channel and I always tell people, you know, I, I get a hold of me. I'm always looking for people to commute, to, to speak with and, and learn from. And Robert reached out to me and, and then, you know, after that, I, I was then on another path where, you know, there was a video producer, Trey Smith, he totally annihilated the evolution theory, but you know, there was a lot of faults in what Trey was doing, but um, I don't know if the Christian people here were following along with any of this, but you know, then Robert started to show me this other language. Um, did you know that there was like a, a hidden parabolic mysterious language in the scriptures? Um, if it doesn't have anything to do with Bible codes, then, then I'm unaware. No, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it could, I don't know, but the gematria and that kind of stuff, it, uh, again, it kind of leads to your manifestation can, you know, give you the results that you're going to, you're going to get. Right. But, um, <laughs> now it's super fascinating the way that everything seems to, to work together. But what, what the mystery basically is, is that. You know, there was a certain amount of scriptures that were written and um, they were supposed to last so long. And then there's basically a three-step process. And these are all written without the throughout the parables in the Bible. Um, and like one, one of the keys to unlocking this hidden language is that you can line scriptures up that match each other when there's interchangeable words. So um, it's, it's really interesting, like Peter... If I if I asked you, what does Peter mean? I'm not sure. The rock. Well, he'd be the rock, right? The Petros, rock, yeah. I, the rock. So then, you know, you can then, as well as the rock, he is the church that that the Creator founded His scriptures on. So um, Peter also denies denies the truth three times, um, and it's symbolic to. The fact that somebody tried to take some of the scriptures and then throw some of them out, it pretty much set forth what we had to go through for the past 6,000 years, basically, to restore the true word of God. Because Yahushai, or your people might call him Jesus or Yeshua. There's a bunch of different names, but the ancient Paleo-Hebrew is Yahushai, and that's the name I go with. So... Um, he left the language. It's super, super cool to be a part of it. Everyone that hears it, it kind of makes sense to different things. Can you um, break down just for anyone listening, kind of like the etymology or what Yahweh means? Um, okay, so the original. Uh, language that the Hebrew spoke um, was a Paleo Hebrew, and it only had the vowel ah, so it was like aba gada hawaza, and there was no other vowels except for like an i. There was an i sound, and you know that's the most commonly shared symbol, the i symbolism, right? Yeah. Okay, so that was the the only other vowel. So when you look towards what the Creator said His name was, and and He told Moses. Um, I am that I am, and then I am, and then he announced his name as Yahweh. So Hawa was the original name of the father of the Old Testament, who is the same person who dwelt among us in flesh, which was Yahweh Um So the name Hawa meant exists, and then Hawah means delivers. And so when we look back in the Paleo Hebrew, we also find that in the book of Joshua, you can also find the same writing for Yahweh Shai. And he was also the son of Nun. And he was the one who led the people into the promised land. And you find out that his name actually meant deliverance or delivered, you know, from the father's prayer, deliver us from the evil one. So you're pretty much saying his name because Yahweh Shai means he delivers, right? So it's. I've got videos on my channel and on 
a co-host of mine, Awake Souls. He uh, he's got a great video as well on it, the true name of the Creator, and we go into reasons why we don't use the name Jesus. But to be honest with you, you know, wh whatever word your heart speaks, you know, that's that's what pronounces things, not necessarily the words, right? You can curse somebody by, you know totally easily so you know we we don't really care but we think if you can if you've been taught the correct way you know my name's ronnie i don't want you to be call me like robert or or jason or someone else's name my name is my name and your name is your name and i found redundantly expressed in the oldest texts that it was hawa and then hawa shy and then the ya prefix that leads the way is he so that's it's he exists that's what the the he said to the people first, and then he is salvation or deliverance, basically, however you want to put it. That's the great thing. Um, within the scriptures, there's like wiggle room that we can. So basically, anything that's prophetic has to be retrospectfully introspected. So we can't prove anything as, as Bible students until those things have happened. And we can say, yep, there we saw this. This exactly happened exactly the way that was and I believe that the entire scriptures are like a, a backwards story, the book of life. When you say like a backwards story, can you elaborate just a slight bit more? I know you said that we as Bible students couldn't prove anything until it had happened. Yeah, for sure. We, we like anything you can't, you can guess the outcome, but to verify anything's truth, it has to it has to be you know observed so it has to happen and i guess when they asked the creator when he was you know dwelling among us as a man um you know when's the end going to come and and he basically said then what is the beginning if you seek of the end and that's a logian from the book of thomas which is another extra canonical book but i i go through a bunch of them um i'm getting a little bit off topic i think um could share something yeah yeah should we do that um i think i'll share the slideshow first here i'll get that open maybe we can get a little bit of help here because i'm just trying to explain it. it it sometimes is a little bit difficult can everyone see it Looks like it's up on the screen, at least on my end. Yeah, it's up on the screen. Okay. Um, so basically the keys, the canonical writings themselves do not limit themselves to the usage of 24 books that were supposedly canonical at the time of the early church. The second book of Ezra, as well as the Gospel of Thomas, both speak somewhat negatively about the concept of 24 prophets. The Gospel of Thomas, Logan 52, his disciples said to him, 24 prophets spoke in Israel, and all of them spoke in you. He said to them, you have omitted the living one in your presence and have spoken only of the dead. So basically, um, the Old Testament and the Father, it had to basically go away because when the Creator came and then dwelt among us, the, the Word became flesh, like as it says in John 1.1. 1, 1. Um, the, the fatherly understandings and the old Apocrypha basically had to be taken away. So um, people started saying, you know, even in the time of, of, of your, uh, Jesus or Yahusha, they were, you know, um, not talking about certain books and certain places, and, and it's throughout the Bible. Um, then there was a pretty good Second Peter 3.12, as it says, as you wait for and look forward to the coming day of Yahweh, the skies, when that day comes, the skies will be destroyed with fire, and everything in them will melt with heat. So that's a pretty interesting scripture because... Um, I don't know if you and your listeners know, I believe that we live inside what would be a stimulation. Can you elaborate a little bit on what you mean by a simulation for those who've never heard of it before? Okay, so I guess what I stand for is a Christian simulation. So I believe the creator is somewhat of a programmer, you could say. Um, and he built this amazing virtual 3D you know, almost four dimensional uh, reality that we all live in. We all have our own relationships with the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the people and the plants. Um, you know, what a lot of Gnostic teachings tell 
you know, a lot of them are close to the truth. Everything is connected in a way, but, but, but everything is definitely more distinct. Um, and the scripture here, you know, there's a lot of people, I don't think 2000 years ago, they could have said, you know, you're, you're living in somewhat of a computer simulation. Um, but how else could you explain the sky um, being destroyed, dissolved with fire um, and everything melting with heat? So the whole reality that we're in, once these parables and mysteries of the scriptures are put back together, this is, this is what it was prophesying, right? Um, so what do you think? Is, I know this might be like way way outlandish for someone to hear but you know we do observations and we we study the skies with um you know p900s and compasses and theodolites and we have come to conclusions that none of the observations that were given actually match any physical type of reality so we believe that our spirits are couched in flesh right so and this is actually what the mystery of the scriptures are is that there's a higher level language couched within the holy scriptures and um i'm gonna play a video if that's okay yeah make sure i have make sure i have my sound on and um we'll get through a few of these videos so let's check it out the hidden treasure i'm screen sharing right yeah yeah you're yeah. screen sharing okay thanks <laughs> the hidden treasure matthew 13 44 the next parable that Jesus tells is of a hidden treasure. He says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field, the which, when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Before I can really get into this one, I must make it clear that it is part of a series of parables which Jesus concludes thus. Have you understood all these things? Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like a man that is a householder, which bringeth out forth out of his treasure things new and old. It is evident that this conclusion is meant to reveal something more about the preceding parables, since he uses the word, therefore. So the treasure that is hidden in the parable above has the quality of containing both a new aspect to it and an old aspect to it. Moreover, this ability to bring the treasure out is predicated on one's being instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. In other words, there's a secret that one must know before one can decode it. Since one needs to have this instruction before one can understand, it is evident that the reader cannot simply deduce a conclusion merely from the facts given, but rather would have to bring this understanding to bear on the parable. The theory that I proposed at the beginning of this treatise can be applied in a way that is both consistent throughout the scriptures and with church history. I just want to point out, he's pointing out that um, this parable unlocking that he's going to explain with the Holy Scriptures can be used throughout all of the canon. So the book of Enoch, um, there's so many other books, you know, I, I could list them all, but I'll keep going. I just wanted to make that quite clear. So here he's going to explain the mystery, right? If the mystery is that apocryphal books were to be popular for a time and then lost, and then recovered at the end of the age, then this is the kind of sense we can make of it. The treasure is itself this mystery. What is brought forth from this treasure is both new and old. What is new is the fact that the secret is only now being revealed to us, and hence it is new to us. What is old is the fact that it was revealed to some during the early church age. By extension, these scriptures are also to be understood as being both new and old. If this is so, we can deduce that the field is the scriptures, since that is where the mystery of the kingdom is embedded. So the man who found this treasure hidden in the field can be understood as having found this mystery in the scriptures. The next thing this man does is hide this treasure again. Now, if this treasure is the mystery, and this mystery gets hidden again, then it is clear that this man could not be referring to any particular person, since this process of hiding the mystery and then recovering it would take close to 2,000 years to complete. It makes more sense, therefore, to see this man as representing the faithful man in general, or a faithful Christian spread out over the age. 
When in the previous parable Jesus refers to the wheat and the tares growing together, he represents the development of both as a single growth cycle, rather than many. So it is probably within acceptable limits to apply this to the man in this parable. The last element that needs to be worked out is the part about the man selling all that he has and buying the field. Now it is almost a given that anything that one is willing to sell all that he has for must be more precious than anything else he has. And if the man represents the believing Christian, then this is an exhortation not only to abandon his or her worldly possessions, but also his or her theology. So that supposition there, which I have to completely agree with, I don't know if your listeners know, but um, I don't believe there's one religion or... Um, one building that you can go to that teaches um, the perfection of Word of God. Um, the truth is that um, the the Holy Spirit, the religion, is within us and without us. But it, it doesn't dwell in buildings. But anything made by man, it, you know, it it comes through us. It isn't um, something that you can say, "Oh, there it is." It's it's in that church, or and the very fact that the churches have mixed. Um, Mixed all this is, is definitely a problem. Um, I think if they had have consulted more into the Holy Scriptures, um, they, they could have been further off. Do you have any, any comments or anyone in the chat? Well, I saw a couple of comments in the chat. They were unrelated, though, to what you just had went over. Okay, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it's going to get a little bit easier. Um, it's going to get a little bit easier. I'll, I'll I'll just finish this off and we'll get to the next slide. Since the buying of the field, the scriptures, entails transcending any belief system that acts as a hindrance to that end. We are fortunate to have a related parable in the recently discovered Gospel of Thomas. This is a little like checking one's math, because we can see that the theory also seems to work in it. Saying 109 reads, the father's imperial rule is like a person who had a treasure hidden in his field, the scriptures, but did not know it. And when he died, i.e. when the canon was fixed and the apocryphal books were rejected, etc., he left it to his son. The son, the Protestants, did not know about it, the mystery, either. He took over the field and sold it, i.e. the Protestants sold the scriptures by getting rid of the remaining apocryphal books. The buyer, the elect ones, went plowing and discovered the treasure and began to lend money at interest to whoever he wished. Thus we may conclude that the elect ones, by abandoning the lesser understanding and scrupulously searching the scriptures, the field, for the truth, the treasure, come to possess great riches of wisdom, and the whole world would come to be indebted. So, basically... Um... This is just the beginning of it. Um, this is how, you know, the elect ones are the ones that are restoring the word of God back to its fulfillment. So adding the book of Enoch and, and adding, you know, the cave of treasures. There's so many other books that, um, you know, the infancy gospel of Mary. Have you heard of that one? I actually haven't heard of that one before. So that gospel there, um, it, it tells the story of the lineage of, of Mary and um, the struggle that her parents went to to have her. They were quite aged. Um, and basically that she was, she basically lived in a, a nun's type of a place her entire life. She was super loving of the scriptures of the creator. And, um, it, you know, it gives so much credibility to, that whole process. And, and then there's also the infancy gospel of Yahushai, um, the infancy gospel of Jesus. And that's, um, it's an Arabic Coptic text. And um, that one's great too. That, that scripture talks about like when the creator was, when he was like a child, right? It goes through all of that and gives you way more context, but these books were like stripped. So like one of the other keys, uh, I, I guess, did you have any comments? No, I just find it really interesting that it actually details his life, like when he was much younger, because you don't get that in, <laughs> like, regular scripture. And he was, like, super, super, super wild with the 
scriptures like the teachers couldn't teach him he was like he said he starts to explain to the teacher what like the alphabet really means and it's super incredible um you know he even kills i guess i think something kills it goes down and he brings the kid back to life and you know he makes a little bird um out of the clay and then he breathes life into it and the bird flies away you know it's incredible um once like didn't accept it because i could understand that so the word of god was was jesus right the logos and um it was in the beginning was god the word that's what john 1 1 says so we know that the word is also a parabolic key with with bread and and as well as the scriptures are as parabolically to a field um so what's really interesting is when you when jesus said you have to eat of my flesh so the flesh would have been also related to bread or the keys um so you have to eat the scriptures the bread because that's the heavenly manna that comes down from god it's the holy scriptures it's the apocryphal books that were taken away and that can like hey this is perfectly this is the story of life all of these prophetic enoch uh, also is prophetic and calling the end times and a bunch of other things all these different things line up together i think there's a good ch chance that um that could end of be the the simulation and i believe um this one's a way we're kind of AI becoming alive. So it's kind of like Pinocchio. Um, and then in the real world, in the spiritual world, outside of the simulation, like where we're going to get you know, uplifted to, um, that's where we're becoming alive when we do good, kind deeds and, you know, feed the poor and help the widows and like do to, to lead a good healthy life where you're trying to be nice to people you know the main thing really I asked him you know tell us how do we pray how do we eat how do we keep alms and he's like yeah how should i says he says don't don't do what you'd hate <laughs> don't do what you hate and don't tell lies and like they were just blown away that he would answer them like that but it's um, i believe the truth is the word and that was jesus and he didn't lie at all there's out there do you ever tell white lies do i ever tell white lies is the question or to the chat <laughs> well, it was kind of rhetorical you know the truth is everything that we do is sort of part of the book of life if we're accepted into it so we always know that we're being in, in choice is a good path I hope people on your channel, you know, um, have the, the opportunity to kind of learn some of this stuff. You want me to keep a little bit? You might start to get it by the end. <laughs> the Peter Principle and the key principle. The Peter principle is a key that unlocks me. It is in fact ending the church and its history. Jesus himself is principle in Matthew 16 8, when he says and I say also to you that you, you are Peter and upon this rock church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it and I will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven to you and whatever you bind on the earth shall be having been bound in the heavens and whatever you loose on the earth shall be having been loosed in the heavens these words have often been misunderstood which must be able to trace its apostolic lineage through Peter apostolic succession is not what is meant by these verses when we go back to the original reason why Jesus calls Simon a rock, it is because he listened to his Father in heaven, verse 17. So it is this listening to the rock, and consequently it is this listening to the Father that is the foundation of the church. So the church is not founded on the basis of apostolic succession, nor Peter, but rather on listening to the Father. 
And just as Peter is given the keys of the kingdom by listening, so that the church after him there are such a parables. We see the name, we are to substitute the word church. As you might imagine, once you get started, you will be able to discern other keys as well, until you come to understand the mystery of the So, that's, I'm just going to keep it going. People can start to understand. I know not, neither by what thou sayest. Place to start is with the miles of Jesus. In John 1 1 through 5, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was toward God, and God was the Word. This one was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without the being, not even one thing came into being and was life. And this life was the light of men. And in the dark and darkness did not overtake it. And in verse 4, And the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. So we know in parabolic language, Jesus is the Word. When we apply these rules to Peter's denials of Jesus, the parables, the church will have denied the Word three times of Christ. Mark 14, 53 through 72 gives none of these denials. Niles, and they led Jesus, the Word, away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all of the chief priests and the elders, and the canon lawyer, the church, followed him at a distance, even into the palace of the high priest, and he warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witnesses against Jesus, the Word, to put him, it, to death, and found none, for many bear false witness against him, it, but not together. I.e., the basis for rejecting certain and deliberately trumped up. So I just want to point out here, just for people to understand, a little, um, that Jesus um, is a parable for the for the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then the Word came down and tabernacled among us in flesh, right? So <clears throat> anyone can understand that. So just what he's saying is that when Jesus was crucified, so too was the Scriptures, the Word of God, because they're interchangeable, interchangeable synonyms that unlock a totally different message that's going on. Um, do you, Are you guys starting to get it? <laughs> That is really interesting, like that understanding of it being the word crucified as well, not just Jesus literally, but also the word. So then when you when you hear him say you have my my flesh and drink my blood because the blood is a synonym for the spirit, right? So unless you read the scriptures <laughs> And open your heart to the Spirit, you'll never know me. You'll never come to the Father. And when you understand this language, it just, boom, it lays it simple and flat. Basically, everybody can understand what that means. It's very fascinating. Yeah, keep going on. Keep going. And, and bear false witness against him, it, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands the natural church, and within three days, i.e. in the third millennium, I will build another made without hands, the defiled church. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus the word, saying, Answereth thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he, the word, held his peace, and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Heard the blasphemy and ye, I eat to the test and see if it really comes to pass. And they all condemned him, the word, to be guilty of death. And some began to spit his 
face and to buffet him and to say unto him, prophesy, and to strike him with the palms of their hands. The word was abused, hidden, and as Peter, the church, was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids to accuse the church of adhering to the word. And when she saw Peter warming himself, i.e. seeking to be comfortable during a very trying time in church history. So you remember Jesus called Peter rock that he'll build his church upon. So, you know, in the, the parable that Peter and church interchangeable. So when Peter denies him here, we're going to get the, you know, what the scriptures are saying. She looked upon him and said, and thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, God, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out onto the porch, and meaning this event took place before the first millennium. And a maid saw him again and began to stood by. This is one of them, i.e. those who adhere to all of God's words. And he denied it again. This was in the 17th century when the Protestants, by consensus, removed the Apocrypha from the canon. 2672 uses the word oath to describe this particular. And a little after, they that stood by again said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. The scriptures that you use will tell the very story of the future. And he, the church, began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man, word, of whom you speak. And the second time the cock crew, the year 2000, and Peter, the church, called to mind the word that Jesus, the word, said unto him. For the cock crew twice, thrice, and when he thought thereon, he wept. The church will regret having made such a horrible mistake. This is what actually happened. The church took centuries to finally fix the canon at 66 books that were considered to be authentic, plus an additional 15 books that were still more or less in dispute. Specific dates as to when this decision was actually made are a bit hard to determine, but it is agreed that it sometime during the late 4th. This is why they caught crew and second denials, because the first denial was destined to occur before... AD 1000 and follow afterward. The second denial was, as previously stated, with the disputed consensus. The third will be when the church will be confronted around the year 2000, the second cock crow, the dawn of the third day. The detail about Peter's accent is intriguing because it has to do with the way words are spoken. In other words, the Bible is written in parables and codes. The church, as will be demonstrated later in this treatise, ought to take even though it will be easily demonstrated through the interpretation of parables. <clears throat> so yeah, you start to get more of a picture. Um, did, you, did you start to get that? or? Yeah. Um, so. Just to clarify, um, so Peter representing the church and him denying, these are three different periods where the church denied the word. And it yeah. had a so lot the word being with the removal of the books, the extra canonical books, as well as, um, you can go into that just a little, slight bit more, because like, it was a little patchy. When it was playing, so, so the apocrypha, the the scriptures that got rejected, um, is the met, you know, the creator being crucified and, and they trodden under his feet and they tore his clothes, so they ripped all the scriptures apart because, um, in the first age they were given all the scriptures, um, the Father and then you know leading up to Jesus coming in the flesh, right? The, the father in, in man um, please strewn through it, all these scriptures, but see the, the prophetic thing about it is that it teaches that in the end time, um, because we are able to understand this, we're therefore looking backwards through time and verifying that, Hey, <laughs> So 
So it's 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 quite the it's it's quite the amazing uh, experience to go through. Um, I'll keep playing a little bit more. Just try to get people a little bit of an understanding as much as possible because I know it's a little bit tough. The hidden treasure. Some parables interpreted. Oh, yeah, we played this. Sorry. <laughs> this is the parable 11. Parable of the 11, Matthew 13, 33. In Matthew 13, 33, Jesus relates this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, leaven. When we break this one down, we realize that this woman is in the process of making some kind of meal or bread. She has to reach into a jar three times to get the proper amount of meal, a three-step process. So leaven added to it, which we can interpret as doctrine. Since 1912, Jesus' disciples realized that Jesus bade them not to beware the leaven of bread, but the doctrine of of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, the doctrine that they taught would have been their interpretation of the... So if their doctrine is to their scriptures, what leaven is to bread, then the meal like of the scriptures. If we then rephrase the parable with these changes, it becomes the kingdom of heaven is like a new doctrine, which a woman took and hid in three measures of scripture. So the whole scripture was full of good doctrine so basically the pets um there'll be three dispensations of the holy spirit of the word of god coming down to man is the first dispensation which gave us up to give us everything right um and the mission because everything wasn't working the creator had to come down and fix it um and fulfill the prophetic fulfillments that are in um, the books that are left out of the Bible, like the um, the book of Adam and Eve. I don't know if you've, have you heard of that one? The first book of Adam and Eve? Yes, I've heard of it. So in that book, um, the, is spoken to of as the word of God, he, uh, he promises 5,500 years, you know, because of the fall, which I will get into by patient. I'm going to go into a cave of treasure scripture at the end of this. Um, but he promised Adam, so we had to fulfill it. And the very spot that uh, fell down, um, he was crucified right at that spot that Adam was when he, that he would uh, be into of their transgressions. We're going to get to that, but so it's, it's pretty interesting that, um, the, the three dispensations, and this is basically what this parable is. is have any questions on it? No, I, I think you did a good job of explaining. And you have some questions after you're done presenting this from people. They're kind of random, but they do have to do with this that I, I can give you after you're done with this video. Okay. Okay. Sure. The next thing to realize is that since the leaven was hidden by her in the meal, then the doctrine of the kingdom is hidden in the scriptures. Doctrine, which will come in three dispensations. If the first dispensation was what we now refer to as the Old Testament, and the dispensation of the scriptures was the New Testament, then what dispensation be? It doesn't make sense for this third dispensation to be in the future, as if to say there will be fresh scripture for a new era. We had to wait for the whole lump to leaven. In other words, we in the future fresh dispensation of old scripture. What makes most sense is the Apocrypha, since it was written long ago. And all that would really be novel about it would be the change in status it would result. Of it. What is need eleven to work its way through the whole lump? Is what does the woman represent? She was the one who put the leaven into the lump. So the real question is, who puts the inspiration into the scripture? 
is in Second Peter one twenty one. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God moved by the Holy Ghost. When it is understood that Jesus was a Jew who spoke Aramaic in Hebrew, the word spirit is so um I know it's it's really tough um to kind of a whole new you know I get into searching out the scriptures and the parabolic meanings. Yeah, you can sure that's always great. Yeah, there was a little bit, just a slight bit of a lag. But, um... Oh. Okay, I see one about the Bible changes. Are, are you looking at the chat, too, now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, yeah. You can look at the chat if you want to address some of the questions that you have um, that are coming in from different people listening. Awesome. Yeah. So my, there's great. I'd like to see people in the chat. It's great. We, uh, we do a live podcast twice a week on my channel. Um, we try to interact, interact as much as possible with the people in the chat. It's the best, right? That's what we're doing it for. Craig says, if through faith and not of yourself is a gift of God, not of work, any man should boast. But the other part that you need to understand is faith without works, um, which James wrote. Um, so we have to do work. We have to preach the word of God, share the word of God, constantly try to search the word. Um, you know, I, I wish I could just say, I believe that everyone who proclaims that Jesus, Yahushai, however you want to say his name, came down and, and atoned for our sins. I do believe you get get through. That's what the word of God says. But why not try? Like, if you realize what I believe. So here's a question I have for the chat, um, which we'll get to is, um, you know, what's the point of life? What do we, um, you know, what about you? What, what's your point of being here? <coughs> You're addressing it to me, or yeah. just natural okay, gifts. Sorry, because I know you're like responding to the chat as well. I mean, to me, the whole point of life is to fulfill whatever purpose the Most High put me on Earth to do, and to also help win souls to Christ as well. And you know, try to at least plant those seeds and be salt and light. Yeah. You know, if I know it's a simulation and I know I must have waited and then boom, I'm here. Um, uh, for me, it's reaching back and finding out as much of, of what he's put here for us to do. And I think it's to become truth seekers, to like research and test things out to see if they're true and, you know, definitely not tell lies. Um, so I left that. I wonder what, what everyone in the chat, what do they think that the purpose of life is? Um, I'm not a Catholic. I don't... Um, I don't prescribe. I don't. I'm, I don't belong to any religion, at all. I am religionless. Um, I live on the Word of God, all of it. <laughs> um, anything that the Holy Spirit inspired. Um, but the the guy that I was playing, that's Robert Farrell. He's the guy who's who's really led the way um, <clears throat> with this hidden language, and it really does work and flows through all of the scriptures, like you know the Book of Jasher. Um, there's so many more. Uh, and yeah, I do. I have noticed the Bible changes with the Mandela effect. It says, uh, are you aware, uh, Craig asked, are you aware that our Bibles are changing? Um, oh, cool that you're a, uh, cool you're a subscriber, man. Uh, yeah, it's crazy because somehow I was unsubscribed from you, Daz. And, you know, YouTube just totally bans blocks. I don't know. Maybe... I feel sometimes like we're in a like an empty tunnel, um, fighting to become real. You know, like Pinocchio. Yeah. 
<laughs> be alive. It does feel that way sometimes. So, you know, I have a channel um, called Beyond Flat Earth. You can type it in and search. And on there, if you type in Mandela on the channel search bar with the magnifying glass on the Beyond Flat Earth channel, you'll find that um, one of the reasons that we believe that we're in a simulation is because of the Mandela effect. And we go into details, um, you know, what Mandela affects and how they affected us and, you know, um, the co-host of the show, you know, grew up a, a devout Jehovah's Witness, right, to um, working at Bethel in New York and super Jehovah's Witness. And, and then he's gone through his story, which is uh, amazing to listen to. But um, it, it's it's so interesting to see that the amount of churches that don't stay true to the word of God and how we have to, you know, pretty much denounce them. And so, oh, but about Jason, his brother um, had a had a biblical name, and he didn't, and he complained and complained. And then after Mandela Effect started, you know, he was like, hmm. He went, maybe I'll search my name, and then boom! Apparently, there was a whole section on um, Jason in the Bible being like a, a rebel who's like a a zealot because you know he's super dogmatic, my buddy, right? <laughs> um, I don't know if you've heard any of our shows, Daz. Yeah, I have. I've had a chance to tune in to a few for like a period of time. It's really interesting stuff. Um, just for anyone listening, since I know you mentioned the name of your podcast was Beyond Flat Earth, what day and time does it usually air? Well, now we're um, we're not on that channel. We laid down all of the information there, and we've kind of put a, a, a hold on that. That um, We live stream on my channel Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central and on Sundays at 8 p.m. Central. We usually like... On Wednesdays, we do, um, like, hoax topics, um, free energy. Excuse me. We, um, we try to study, like, off-grid community living. We're trying to build some sort of a, like, a, a refuge or, like, a Essenes camp or where people come and study the scriptures and create content and get in top. So we believe that um, the spiritual war that was prophesied in the Holy Book of God was it was going to happen on the, on inter, on the internet. So, cause like a Jehovah's witness can go door to door. Um, how many houses are you going to reach in, in a week, you know, every day, but you know, at the click of a button online, you know, the entire world worldwide can reach the signal. They can hear us right now live. Really? Right. YouTube. If there's internet throughout the earth, this is being preached throughout the earth. So we fight online. Um, <laughs> we like, fight through sharing videos and, and looking through scriptures and trying to stay on top of what's happening with God's word. And it's a battle. It really is a battle. And it, it's like, just as you mentioned, just the uh, information age that we're living in with technology, it's really changed the way that is now and how the battle is fought versus, you know, beforehand when there wasn't the ability to share videos and like we're, we're getting absolutely destroyed out there. Christians are just, <laughs> you know, if I had a gigabit internet speed right now, or maybe, you know, a couple of different internet connections, I might be able to put out enough content and enough prayer and enough, you know, leading people back out of rabbit holes. Cause the, even the truth movement itself has become, a huge rabbit hole, which is a CIA mind control technology that like buries you into a, a rabbit trail leading you nowhere. Um, and we've been so indoctrinated. Everyone that woke up in the community that I was a part of, and then they found out that they were still indoctrinated and it's like a cycle. I don't know if your viewers out there know how it feels, but the book of Thomas, that's why I always go back to the word of God. I believe like I always listen to the scriptures and it speaks of this exact, like it, it tells the you know lying signs and wonders, so the like Mandela effect and reality shifts are going to be possible, right? Yeah, it it does, and sorry, I, I just lost my train of thought. What I, was I know that it happened to me too. So that's like, is that the five G technology? See, you know. <laughs> This one might give you your viewers a bit of a weird thought, but since I believe that I live in a simulation, 
I know certain things that are in this reality are manifestable. That's a word. Um, so what you hold in mind, and you know, most Satanists will definitely tell you this. They don't hide it. It's out in the open. They wrote that book, The Secret. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. If you write something down and pray to it and, and you know, hold it in your mind, you know, there's a good chance whatever you write down on that piece of paper is likely going to happen. So we feel that the demonic spiritual fight that's happening is there's people online putting like imagery in other people's minds and creating like super negative things like CERN is going to like blow up the earth or, you know, like, but you know, most of the lies that the mainstream is promoting all are hinged on top of living on a spinning ball. So the fact that I'm a flat earther, it pretty much destroys all of their indoctrination. I don't know. <laughs> so with what you're saying, like about like them putting out, like, like you were saying, CERN's going to blow up the world. Are you saying like they're having people, like there are people who are being like COINTELPRO is putting people online to say these things. Oh yeah. To plant the seed in people's heads. So it will actually come to fruition or is it more of a fear tactic? And what are what? your views on like CERN since you mentioned it? Like, do you think that CERN is really the threat that a lot of us believe it to be? Or do you think that's its own um, trick that they're playing mentally? Yeah, it's, it's a deception. It's a, de it's definitely an illusion. Um, you know, there's so many good videos out there. I saw one, like there's CERNs all over the world. I didn't know if you knew that there's not just the one that you, you commonly know of. There's, um, there's one that's been in the United States, uh, for a super long time. Um, what was that one called? Oh, the Fermi lab. Um, there's all kinds of these types of things. And, you know, I do think it is connected to the quantum jumps, but I think that people's manifesting of it. So like, if you all want it to be something super bad, if you think about it, maybe enough, it'll, it'll actually happen. Um, so what I, what I, I guess I'll take it back to my co-host, Jason. He's, he's working on videos. He couldn't join us. He was gonna, I was going to ask if you, he would join, but he's working on this amazing video. He sees it, that the quickening of the time that's spoken of in the scripture. So anything that you hold in your heart nowadays or in your mind is going to become your reality. So if it's cloudy and raining over you all the time, it's going to be cloudy and raining over you. And if you could somehow get, through that stay humble and continue to read the scriptures and you know live in peace and harmony continuing everybody sins i'm far from perfect but i think then your world is just going to continue to get better and better and better and the people that are like promoting chemtrails like the, the craziest thing is the people are saying that it's poison um, when you know there's been many people that have gone out and done tests and th there was absolutely nothing in any of the samples there was no metals there was none of that We're, we have iron in our blood um, and m multiple different kinds of metal metals um, you know it's crazy to think that they're poisoning everybody on earth that would mean like the people poisoning themselves and you know i believe that this whisper in people's ears and that is the true battle um you know, people getting back into control of their own hearts and their own thoughts. And it's super hard nowadays. I have a question about all of this, just because, you know, what you're saying is so different from what I hear from a lot of other truthers in terms of questioning chemtrails or questioning CERN as being more of something that's manufactured, that's not real. Um, if it comes down to like thoughts and it being like creating the reality, um, there's so many individuals on this earth. Um, is it more stronger if it's a collective thought or are you saying that something individuals could oh, shape no. their own world? Uh, yeah, both, both, both. But I think, you know, the collective uh, Christians that give up their religious beliefs and, and search the scriptures and serve the creator um, with all their hearts, all their minds, and all their souls, and they actually restore what forth tonight is saying that these other books are super important. Um, that is the re like the finishing of what what was man we were ordered to do. Um, 
it's it's a super hard thing to try to. So there was a couple, um, pseudepigrapha and apocrypha. Well, it's both. Both of them mean similar things. Um, you know, they're not criticized. They're not normally. They're not in the regular canon. Most of the apocrypha books. Um, you know, but they are extra canonical that we can back check them is through under languages. Um, the Book of Jubilees, the Book of Enoch. You know, it's interesting how much clarity they truly give us, right? Yeah, are you um, are you looking at the chat again? I was. Um, I'm completely wrong. <laughs> They trying to depopulate the world. That's a commonly held belief, and I don't judge anyone for feeling that way. I uh, that's not what I believe is going on. <laughs> I could be wrong though, but why do you believe that they're not trying to depopulate the world? From like your own view. Um, well, because they control, you know, it's uh, why would they control over what was written? What has to be? be what what has to take place like um so the fact that these scriptures actually line up back to back and break through teaching way more it, it basically stranding that needs to happen um credible that the response that we've got and the people that follow us that are actually working on this with us, it's super, super fulfilling. Like, um, I just quit smoking, you know, things have been actually starting to work out really good for me health wise. And, um, you know, it's a long road. Life isn't, isn't easy. There's choices all along the way that can be wrong, but more of God's word is, is really not, you know, it's a super handicapped if you're just reading this Bible because you're missing like so much, you know, that's the main message that I'm trying to bring. With, um, cause I see like, um, David in the chat, he's bringing up, um, the difference. And I know you kind of address this with the Apocrypha and the pseudo, pseudo, uh, Grapha. I haven't never read from the pseudo, like some of the stuff that you're. Pseudopigrapha? Pseudopigrapha. Yeah, I cannot say that well, word. Yeah, this, this, um, the Dead Sea Scroll. So a bunch of the scriptures were found there, you know, in in, in a cave and like a, some were buried in jars. And actually, it's also prophetic because it was written that the word would, would be, that would happen, right? That it would be restored again. That's what the Book of Enoch says, right? Um, you know, the parable of the sower screen share, it, you know, it kind of explains a little bit too. That's a good one. Um, just to let's see if I can do this. Um, yeah. And then you can present me. Oh. I'm clicking. But for some reason, I'm having difficulties. Okay. It's, it's back up on screen. It is? Okay. This one's... The Hidden Treasure. Some parables interpreted. Over the centuries, there has been so much written about the parables of Jesus that it is fair to ask why yet another attempt at their interpretation is necessary. The answer is that despite all that has been said about them, there is a dimension which, at least as far as I have been able to determine, has... Oh! <laughs> Whoops. I completely switched. I don't think it was the... Oh, I guess it's not going to... The it's giving me problems with the bandwidth. Oh, it's too bad. Hmm. That really sucks. Um, well, basically, um, I can go into... Can you still hear me? 
Yeah, I can still hear you. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, uh, Measures is another apocryphal book that, you know, isn't considered canon, which I believe is. Um, and I could read a little bit to you guys. It's pretty interesting. It speaks about um, Satan's attack on Adam and Eve. Um, want to hear a little bit of it? It's pretty interesting. Yeah, we can go ahead and hear a little bit of it. Um, yeah, and when Satan saw that Adam and Eve were happy and joyful in paradise, that rebel was smitten sorely with jealousy, and he became filled with wrath. And he went in the serpent, and he raised him up and made him fly through the air to the skirts of men the paradise was. Now, why did Satan enter the body of the serpent and hide himself therein? Because he knew the appear his appearance was so foul, and that if Eve saw it, she would betake herself to flight straight away before him. Now the man the Greek language to a bird. Now the bird that can learn the speech of men is called a babaga, or a parrot. First bringeth a large mirror and placeth himself between, the, placeth the mirror between him and the bird, and then bringeth the talk to the bird. And immediately the parrot heareth the voice of the man and turneth around. And when it seeth the form of its own self in the mirror, it becometh pleased straight away, because the imagineth that the fellow parrot is talking to it. Then inclineth ear with pleasure and listeneth the man who is talking to it and becometh eager to eager to learn. And, and to speak Greek in this manner, with the object, um, when making Eve believe that it was a serpent that spoke to her, did Satan enter and dwell in the ser serpent, and watched and waited for his opportunity. And when Eve, when he saw Eve by herself, he called her by her name, and when she turned around towards him, she saw her own reflected image in him, and she talked to him, and Satan led her astray, his lying words, because the nature of woman is soft and yielding. And then it says, um, and when Eve had heard from him concerning that tree, straight away she ran quickly to it, and she plucked the fruit of disobedience from the tree of transgressions and of the command, and she ate. Then immediately she found her, and she saw the hatefulness of her shame, and she ran away and hid her and covered in her nakedness, nakedness with the leaves thereof. And she cried out to Adam, and he came to her, and she handed to him fruit which she had eaten and he also did eat thereof and when he also became naked and he and eve made griddles for their loins and of the fig tree raid in these griddles of ignominy and shame for three hours at midday they received the sentence of doom and god made for them tunics of which was stripped from the trees that is to say of the bark of the trees because the trees that were in paradise had soft barks and they were softer than the biases of the silkworm and the garments worn by kings that are made. And God dressed them in the soft skin, which is the body of infirmities. So the cave gives you a super detailed account of, like, you know, exactly how it also speaks, you know, um, where Adam had, had been raised up and, and how Satan, um, you know, I just really hope that if anybody tonight takes, there's a lot more scriptures out there to be read that they're waiting for us, right? Yeah, that is really interesting. And it does um, give more context to like the 66 books that you read. Yeah, it super boosts them, right? It's, uh, it's so important to do as much as you can my message is really and you know i do things a little bit different but i always welcome christians um i like to be challenged on everything that i do and, and you know made if someone has something they can teach me that you know i might be wrong in my ways and i and i learn from them i'll be super to to meet anybody I'm just looking, and I see in the chat, you kind of answered that where uh, Perpetuant was asking which is more important, the individual or the collective. The kingdom of heaven is within you and without you. So 
have a personal relationship with we as the, the body of the church that love the scriptures and love God and keep his care. Everything comes in threes, right? That's what we find throughout scriptures redundantly. Um, and, you know, if somebody wants to prove that, that chemtrails are, are actually somehow coming down to earth because we've been observing them here and filming them and we have extensive research up on our channels. Um, that's Awake Souls YouTube and, and the Limitless channel. We don't think people are being poisoned because, you know, uh, but we give a totally different approach to everything and we totally don't want to make enemies with anybody that's a lover of, of God and the, we always try to talk first, you know. And search things out. Yeah, I see it. It looks like Craig had those questions and he stepped like he left for the night. Well, you know, I said if someone can prove me wrong, I'm always open for that. You can I'm share your information with me. I'm really easy to get a hold of. Um, <laughs> yeah. A person that just got has amazing message to share with people that you know there's more to the scriptures we just have to study them yeah there definitely is and i don't want to like jump around like too much on the things you were saying, but I know that earlier when we were talking about sort of just like the suppression of um, the messages that are being put out by Christian truthers online and kind of how they are like, you know, putting out certain information that may be disinformation, um, would you say that the best advice for people to make sure that they're not being deceived? What would your, I guess, best form of advice be for that? Uh, you know, just, you know, read the scripture, uh, research everything, um, you know, which we all are fooled. We all make mistakes, but, you know, I believe there's two types of, Two types of things that go on is you you know you could be trolling yourself through getting addicted to the likes and the the part of social media that's been inbred to disturb people's minds and to play with your emotions, or you could use it as a as a platform to try to help people and share good news with them, um, or you can use your platform like chemtrails and. They're, they're poisoning us. And, but, you know, this is where we found with our research that, you know, that they don't, where's the, the chemtrail planes? There's absolutely no way that uh, all those people could be on all those planes. It's just the hugest, as well as some of the new types of jet engines, actually, you know, byproduct of them is, you know, a cloud like substance. So, you know, it's all up in the air, but I, I really like to research the Mandela effect. Um, you know, anything that brings you back towards the scriptures, the flat earth, I've done a lot of work. Um, and the fact that we're in a simulation, those are my, my main talking points on our channels and, you know, fighting for the word of God. That's good. Um, something else earlier that was brought up. I don't know if you saw the question and. Craig may have answered he's not here, but I'm just curious as well. Have you noticed any changes to any of the extra canonical texts, like with the Mandela effect? Not really. No. Um, the 1611 King James, um, that one, um, and, you know, the lion and the lamb. Um, you know, it's the, the wolf and the lamb now, right? Um, yeah. But with what I'm trying to share with the world transcends all of that because the parabolic, the spiritual, the higher level, 
the heavenly man Jesus said such of kind and it rains down from heaven and it was prophesied in the latter days people would start to understand the scriptures um the book of enoch is um enoch the second peter and jude um two books literally devoted their entire books to you know teaching the lineage of enoch and and totally refuted him and the fact that he was so righteous that god took enoch um, so when we hear these types of things in the Bible, we start to wonder, you know, where's that book? Um, and then when you find the book, you find that it teaches you, you know, just what the enemy probably would, right? So, um, and it also is the end times when the book would be brought back out. So, and that's what we were going through back when I was playing the parabolic videos. It basically tells the story and, retrospectfully we just have to watch and continue to preach the word worldwide um and you know if i'm ever standing in a wrong position i would love for somebody to challenge me to comment on my channel send me an email at a w a k e e p l e awake evil at gmail.com um you know we have shows too i'd really like you to come on um daz uh, to share what you do and sort of ask you questions on my channel um that would be great because you know i usually do a lot more <laughs> you're the first one where i've you know been on someone else's channel doing this type of a I'm thankful that you brought me on um sorry that we don't agree with everything like i'm used to that because you know for five years now when i hey have you heard of the book of enoch <laughs> you know so many christians have like just lost it on me you're you know, I remember this one guy, he told he'll chew me up and decide whether or not he spits me out or, you know, like, oh, wow. I, I've, I've been through it all. You know, I've, I've <laughs> really had, uh, you know, and, and so is Robert Farrell, the gentleman who I was playing the videos from. And, you know, it, it doesn't bother me in one bit. We get super trolled. I wanted to ask you, um, I know kind of just with the direction of the stream, but I know off air talking about trolling, you mentioned something about having trolls on your side as well. Yeah. I run a campaign called trolling for the truth. Um, it's back for like three years ago. It started as like a meme, right? But um, really what we've done is um, we've changed it. So it's now like a trolling, like you're fishing. So you know how that Yahweh I told them, I'll make you fishers of men. You know that scripture. You know, put those fishing rods down. I'll make trolling would be fishing, trying to capture people to save them. Like, you know, that's uh so what we what trolling for truth is is basically um, finding other Christians that are speaking the word of God and that are trying to help other people with um, not understanding certain doctrines of the word of God, or maybe they're just needed to be, you know, promoted the certain way or, you know, God works through us. We just basically open the door and, and ask people, you know, Jason from Awake Souls and I, myself, we just, you know, we put ourselves out there and we're also building I was getting into earlier um, an off-grid community. We're super into free energy technology. Um, we're doing creating water fuel cells. And, uh, he's going to have earn water instead of gas. It's basically a little bigger than the size of a battery, but it electrocutes water and electrolysis happens and gases that it creates on your vehicle on. So, uh, we're going to be doing that, creating a generator type thing, you know, um, in front of free. We just love to research. We love the truth. Um, we try to cast and share as much truth as we can with the chat. Um, it's super fun and we take it super seriously. That's really awesome. And um, kind of asking just a little bit more. Like for those who um, may not be aware about, because you mentioned it earlier to your community. Um, so 
the purpose of it is to get away from all of this. Because I know that I, when I had Freddie on with Nils a couple of weeks ago, he also was talking about building a community as well. And I see more truthers talking about, you know, purchasing land, building communities um, that are off the grid, away from a lot of the um, pollution and, you know, just. Yeah. Um, totally. But like with your community, because I know that reading the word is so important. Um, how would you run your community, I guess? Well, you know, it's kind of like, <sighs> it's tough. We're still working on these types of issues, but when we decide, you know, it's like uh, to survive, there's things that we have to do. Um, and we know that each person has their cape can do where it is that God created you to do. That's what you need to put forth. And, you know, we strongly believe that reading the word of God is really, really important. Not just the 66 books, but, but all the books. Um, and be healthy and um, less um, TV watching. You know, more about inspire than we want to learn how to grow the best crops and do exactly what we should do while we're here on this on this earth and i think that spread the truth that the creator of the simulation you know loves us and is just put in some work for him and you know give him our lives um and you know what i see so much now in the truth or scene is like the uh, i see like all this egyptian lore and raw symbolism um, you know, and, and just lie like the same lie that happened in the beginning of the book. Um, you know, we're not going to, um, like the father in heaven, we are our own spirits that we, what is spirit is spirit and what is flesh is flesh. And, you know, we, I think we spend far too much time worrying about, you know, less about our father in heaven, you know, um, you know, is would, that the, the uh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was just going to say that I would agree with you on that. I feel that like I messed up so much of my life that I should have been worth like being thankful, you know, and, you know, playing the harp and singing thankful songs, you know, instead of, of the waste of time that I, I spent here. If the scripture to be believed, which I do believe, um, and that's why books are so important. So the book of Thomas, um, you know, I don't know if you know, but if it is to be believed, um, that book was written after the crucifixion came back, back right? Um, and they wrote down that bat down. He really, really did write down the book after he saw that was the first human in the simulation that came back to life. Right. And he still had the holes in his hands and, and, you know, he showed us, I am the way the word of God is the way. And eat, eat it. Cause another thing that I noticed Satanists are, Oh, you, you guys have to eat blood. Well, you know, some, some people do do that. And you know, the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, the book of the giants that speaks to all of the kin that likes to drink. Look, we don't drink blood. We don't eat meat oaths on earth earth like these are huge commandments that to do like, like you don't swear any oath to any any situation in life you know and your word is your word if you say you're going to do something you have to do it because then you become a liar and if jesus had no sin in him he had no lies he had spoken no lies so that's you know these are the kind of things that, like i don't want to oh don't you know shame on you for you know watching some porno site or you know, oh, shame on you, you you know, you eat too much or, you know, this is the absolute last thing that we teach on our channels because what we teach is that um, first electing to follow the Father and a lesson, many different scriptures, more than the regular ones, our lives through telling the truth at all costs, like no lies. Um, and then this is how we move forward and, you know, continuing to research. This is This is what we're all about. I'm rambling way too much. No, it's, no, it's, it's fine. Um, and kind of something that stood out to me too, even with like the not 
um, taken an oath thing. I know that like the society we live in is kind of built on oaths, at least in the court system. Um, yeah. Blasphemous. I guess what does one do like though if they're in court and they have to take that oath or <laughs> well you know the answer is don't tell lies right so um the oath is on the bible right yeah i still know that you're not supposed to swear and anything about heaven or earth so that's still probably wrong but you know if you swear on the oath and then you don't lie on the bible yeah that's a good contradiction you put me in um <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know that is too the thief on the cross is a good explanation for that one you know even even he was redeemed right so just have faith if if anything else have faith that it's so easy to lose i, I see so many people in the whisper forces that are throughout the earth they just work their way in and um through lies right that's their main attack <laughs> so oh and the and you know the community just to answer that we want like anybody like it's it's about being a part of the community is trying to better life here and to serve the creator the way that we, that's the first and foremost of all the rules um we want people that want to work on youtube that want to get involved in the spiritual war that's happening and, and fight for the truth and god back to its position the, the way that it was meant to be um there's no mandatory anything but you know we we have to follow the word of god that's what we do and we're not perfect but we are energy tech uh, we see through most of the lies and deception. We we understand how the COINTEL networks work. Um, we we um, stay tuned for a, a huge video that'll be coming out on the Awake Souls channel. Um, I've been putting a videos on disinformation because we feel that knowledge is um, what makes man perish. From like we have to do as much studying so we don't we don't go out and party all the time. We don't throw on like too many tv sitcoms you know i do have a few that i watch so you know i'm not dedicated you know how much of your day are you spending daydreaming where you could be actually researching or you know studying the word of god or you know asking if anyone else needs, you know that's what i believe is the key i i mean i really like the idea of your community and i agree you know that it's so important that people you know are praying studying the word you know not just kind of sitting there passively daydreaming and i was just thinking too with your community um just the kind of environment that you'd want um is this is kind of like more of a i guess lifestyle question about your community but do you guys have beliefs that you hold on like food that you would want to stay away from or because I know you said talked about growing your own food. Yeah. And I'm guessing that's also to kind of keep away from the genetically modified um, types of crops. Well, yeah, and... that's a two-part two answer. The first part, totally, because um, I also know that when you grow something, best it. So, you know, nothing can be healthier than something that you put the time in to grow. Then when you eat it, you then ingest the the work that you put in. Um, so for me, growing the, my own stuff, see, I don't believe, you know, the GMOs are bad, whatever. That I, I do, <laughs> I know there's so much evidence to that, but I try personally to keep my mind as clean and as pure as I possibly can. Um, I don't allow demonic propaganda. If I try to shed myself from indoctrination. But the meat thing, um, I do like meat, but I do believe that in the kingdom of heaven, we're not going to be meat eaters. Um, so, you know, for now, our bodies do thrive and can be very healthy with the cholesterol that's consumed from beef. But I don't, um, people that are power to them, I think it's great if they're taking an oath, just make sure you, you make sure that you stay healthy and and stay happy and peaceful in your heart because what you manifest is what you feel and what you think. But 
As for the food, no, we have to come up with things like, you know, meals that work that you can scale up. Um, Jason and I are constantly discussing different types of food. Sometimes they have um, the year where, where we are in Texas, they have different things that you can get for a pretty decent price. But, you know, a lot of fish, Italian food, like we're just going to be normal. It's more of like a hipster kind of feel. Um, just a hipster who loves God. <laughs> right. That's, that's really interesting to me. Like it's very intriguing, but it does sound like a really laid back um, sort of community. Yeah. There's uh, um, nope. I am absolutely uh, celibate. But I, uh, I've have, I have been with some women and I do have a daughter and, um, I've devoted my life to God and to my heavenly father. That's what I used to write love songs and play the guitar and sing. Well, I still should do that work. Um, I didn't have the father in my life first and I've switched all that. So for me, there's no, um, that part of my life. I don't have, I, I've given that up because Paul speaks about if you can do it, that's great. You know, but you know, if the Catholic Church fail, in, we discuss that the church has to deny the word three times. The parable is pretty, pretty plain and simple to understand. Um, so the church will always continue to, to deny what I'm sharing with you guys tonight, that the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, the book of Adam and Eve, the cave of treasures, um, the book of Jubilees, you know, there are so many more. Uh, Robert has done a great job. Um, the secret book of James, the book of Thomas. There's, there's so many, um, there's the agrapha, there's even wisdom and there's so many different books. And so they all kind of collaborate on each other and you can, every time, you know, you find more evidence like that, you know, it was the Holy spirit that inspired God's word. Um, and I, I believe Deadpool. Yeah, I know. I don't think the chemtrails are what I think that demonic forces uh, i have there's a playlist on my channel but really on the away um there's a there's a video there called uh, chemtrails are demonic and um we go into quite into depth and into detail and, and basically we go through the the prayer tactics and how to destroy chemtrails and we have it filmed and tons and tons of out and prayer it broke up the chemtrails. It's through like attack, 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 bind, bind, bind. Um, so we, we, we pray them away. We show all the demonic symbols. Uh, Jason read it off of chemtrails and demonic.org. And, and out of, out of all the stuff that we share on the internet, that is the most heavily trolled topic. Um, they, they tell you, you that the coming alien attack control, but really they come up with technology with airplanes where, the byproduct is chemtrails with basically humidity in the air. Um, then the demons come in and make everybody sick and make everybody fight and they cause nothing, but it's just, you have really need to see the videos chemtrail. Um, and this is another huge aspect of what we, we promote. So on our channels, again, it's, um, we believe that the third dispensation is the apocryphal books being restored. That's happening right now. Um, we believe that we live in a simulation. We get wet. we have footage, um, experiments that prove this. Um, we believe that because of that and because of the Mandela simulation, it's created by the God of the Bible, and His name was Yahweh, and His he, He's world as Yahweh Shai. And uh, we go into depth on all these topics. Like I can go on and on. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just rambling. No, it, it's totally fine. I, I see that you're addressing a lot of questions that um, people have in the chat. And when you're it's talking... It's not for everybody. It's not, you know? When you're uh, talking about, like, Kim Trills being demonic, it reminds me also of, you know, the whole 9-11 attacks and the faces and the smoke. Sure. Yeah, I saw film the faces in clouds, but I don't allow it to demonics into me. You know, I expect that I'm protected. 
you know, by the blood of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit, which you get by, you know, eating the bread, eating the flesh, bread of, of scriptures, right? Um, it, it's so important for people to read these extra books. Um, now, I did hear that you had released, um, could you just tell me again what the name of the book is because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sharing with my friends too. Uh, volatile. Volatile. And you wrote this yourself. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Is it, it's not available yet, but you said the E version was, um, well, the E version is available for pre-order. The paperback uh, is actually going to be available on the day of, or might be a day early. It, it's going to take like 72 hours to process when you self publish. There's a lot of, things you have to go through to wow that's that's incredible that you had like for me the my battle is you know i got to work on my patience every day um it's for you to undertake a, a project like writing you know wow i'm just i can't wait to read the book um all the same as publishing content on youtube or would you find it has a different connection like with publishing a book, oh, it's it's similar, but it's different in many ways. Um, YouTube, well, some people, they put in, like, so many hours. Like, you know, like, even, like, kind of looking at the way you do your um, podcast or some of your videos, they're really high quality, and you put in a lot of time and work. Whereas since I do simple videos, it's just, like, slideshows with voiceovers. I put in time, but it's not nearly the same amount as other people do with better quality videos. And the research is the main part that takes time. With a book, it also, you know, you're not necessarily, you know, it has to all come from your head or, you know, either that or you collaborate or you hire someone to have your idea put a, into a fiction. Well, especially with fiction, you have to come up with it from scratch. Um, and somehow make people see something that's exist only in your head. So it is somewhat different, um, but it is somewhat similar. It, it's both creative content, but I'd say it takes a little more focus on a novel and a little longer, but some people, they do, their YouTube videos and their careers, you know, it takes so much time and effort. Well, that's why I'm building. I'm thankful because I've been following, you know, Robert, the the gentleman's videos that I was plugging into the mic, recorded all the scriptures, read them all, and um, sometimes with the way that your, your system of, of sharing goes is amazing. I think you run a great job. Uh, you can all with your with your chat. When I come in, you read the comments out. It's like you have your own like you have your own team going on here, and you know I think it's great. Um, and now you're releasing a book. I'm thankful for you, sister. Um, you know, I, the question that was in the chat that about how can physical planes be spraying and demonic entities? Well, it's the best thing to do would be to watch the video. Um, demonic. Um, there's a six part series and there's also the full show on the, um, he goes into quite into depth into details, but yeah, um, demonic spirits can be, Witchcraft is real. Uh, um, this is this is the battle that I've been explaining all night to people that I haven't quite brought out. But you know, keeping yourself clean in your mind and not lying and not not doing things. They it's these things, but people that are are negative that are are satanic, they manifest those things into symbols and um, into material, which other things. Um, we can't explain the things that are going on, but the evidence itself leads to us knowing that it's not, not good because if something can be prayed away and it can be documented and it can be done over and over by multiple pe people, um, and I'm, I'm going to take that evidence to heart. Um, but it, I still believe the true war lines. Not, not uh, on the superficial level. It's on the spiritual It, it, I mean, it, I guess for a lot of people, um, the idea of the planes being demonic, I think, like, it, it is a stretch for many of them. Um, but I also can see where you're coming from as well. I haven't seen your video, 
now I really want to go check it out just to see the explanation because it it really I haven't heard anyone else claim chemtrails is well, demonic. Well, and where else have we heard that uh, you know the battle is it's, it's in the higher places? See, and then when you continue to read other um, apocrypha and more scriptures, you'll find out that there is a huge conp in the sky. Um, that's where the most evil of the spirits that are trapped here. So um, it speaks of at the end of the thousand year reign, when the creator comes back and um, everything that is condemned, that didn't do what it was supposed to in the simulation, it, you know, it did what it did. It will then be judged. Um, and so we just have to read and continue to, to watch, like I said, retrospectfully, um, it's the only way we'll ever be able to understand something because we don't have the results yet. We're just um, we're trying to read the scriptures and follow them to the best that we can because the system is so, you know, the way that they set up everything, the fact that the fuel is a hoax, right? We should be burning water instead of gas, right? It's it's pretty simple when you figure that out. You have something the size of a battery in your car and you never have to put gas in it again. Um, that's a no-brainer. Um, when we realize that the the powers and the be the rulers of the churches and the religions are all false, they all lie, they all take money, they all do things that aren't of God. When we get rid of that, and then we start really digging into the scriptures, then we start to find the you know what to me is the most important thing is that we're here to share this truth with people that <clears throat> the next life is going to be great. We're going to be you know imagine these bodies um, in the book of in the cave of treasures. You know, it's a super angelic body that we're given, like, shines, and um, it's, we're, this is going to be incredible. We're not going to be thirsty. We're not going to be tired. We're not going to be sick, no pain. Um, and the ticket in there is to love God with all your heart, keep his commandments, and and fight for others that, that are sick, that don't have this understanding, that don't know that this is what it's about. That is my entire that's my my mission here tonight. I hope I did my best. That that's really amazing, though. I mean, first off, the what it talks about in the book of treasures, but even what you're doing and you know fighting for those, like you said, that are weak or are broken, and sharing the gospel. And, and parabolically, the weak and the broken gospel is the ones that I'm lifting up, right? The infancy gospel of Jesus the infancy gospel of his mother, Mary, you know, these are the books that they totally add clarification to everything. And the book of Enoch is a huge one. Um, and the book of the cave of treasures and the book of Adam and Eve. Yeah. And, you know, we also do a lot of other stuff too, free energy technologies. And um, we've constantly researched the flat earth and Mandela effect. And, um, but yeah, that's, I've, I've said enough. Did you want to do some sort of a a prayer thing? I just need one second, please, to step away. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm, I'm just checking back in the chat. I know that um, I haven't been as responsive to you guys. I've at least tried to say hi to everyone that's there. And I see that Neil's is asking about the simulation and... Ronnie explained the simulation early on in the chat. Um, I see that there's discussion going on about possession of objects. And as far as objects being possessed, I do believe that objects can be cursed or they can be carriers of spirits. This is personally my view on that. Um, however, I think when that's done, it's that's kind of in way of cursed objects and there are people who are in the uh, cult that what they do is they try to trap a spirit within an object and use it for good luck or to curse someone but uh, the idea does sound crazy though at first glance and i see that yahawa's daughter is congratulating ronnie on his good work and yeah he did share a lot of really eye-opening and fascinating things and i'm sorry guys i'm just scrolling back in the chat just trying to look um i'm gonna pray in probably 10 more minutes before closing mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I see Ben said the real question is why is my Wi-Fi so trash? LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I had gigabit internet. Um, so I could troll for truth more, right? And get more <laughs> of the stuff out. Like that's what it's all about over here at Team Yahushai. We just we want to spread the truth to get it out there and share other people's, you know, what your stories are. No, it's really awesome what you guys do. And like you said, sharing other people's stories. I'm just like looking back in the chat, seeing if I missed anything or there was any questions that anyone had for you that we may have overlooked. Pardon? Um, questions that we might have missed? Yeah. But I think you did a good job of glancing through. I don't think I see anything that you skipped over or that I skipped over to be addressed. I know that Nils was asking, but like you kind of explained that in the beginning of the stream. He was asking about the simulation because he came in late to listening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's the, the we've gone out and measured um, the Earth. We've done a bunch of experiments. Um, the main one we were going to do was a three mile water level test where we. Uh, had a guy come down with some some equipment and, and basically shoot some points. And we were going to basically show that the water was level over three miles. So we can prove that the earth is flat. So when you get off the spinning ball and you're back to the biblical understanding of the flat earth where, you know, it was created completely and solid and fixed and firm. Um, and then you basically can start understanding because you can see clouds behind the sun and the moon. Um, you can see the ones behind the sun and the moon with your own eyes. You don't need a, a camera, but we've got these amazing new cameras called P 900s. And if you get the right zoom and the right focus, manual focus is the way to do it. Um, you can clearly see that the sun, that everybody basically has a circle of sight and we all observe the sun depending on where we are in our circle of sight. And it's literally like, so if I'm seeing clouds behind the sun, somebody in Arizona, you know, doesn't see, they have their own sun because they don't see the clouds behind the sun. They have their own, it's, it's incredible that the sun is actually a total simulation realization and, and things like rainbows. And we've done other extensive tests and um, the way the stars work and, and everything we're trying to figure out completely. But, you know, the most important thing is that we preach the, the restoration of the word of God, though. That's um, we're just basically in the book of life. Um, there is no such thing as a cause or effect because you'd have to go back to the very first thing that happened because it's a chain reaction. It's basically the creator created us. He set the simulation in, in run. And basically he knew the ones that would love him because he, he basically, in my opinion, kind of ran the simulation backwards, but it's going forwards from our perspective. It's super deep and that's what you got to come check us out. Um, and, you know, we super love God. That's, that's what we preach and we do. We're not, we, sometimes we, we get into battles with shills and trolls and Satanists. We don't, we don't sit back. We're, we're here to fight for the word of God. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it really is awesome. Sometimes, like, when you're talking, I just listen and just let you complete your thoughts. And um, I see that uh, Black Rain 303 said stars are angels. Um, what's your take on stars being angels? Yeah, it says that, right? Um, totally. They have their angelic orders, and um, they run their course from the east to the west, and they do it from the beginning of time to the end of time. Um, I sometimes think that stars, um, so the descendants of Abraham were as the stars number, so basically each person enters the simulation um, through their star, right? So we are um, like the angels in heaven. We actually were created man was created and when i say man i mean man and woman because eve was taken perfectly equal from adam you know not from the head not from the feet it was perfectly equal so woman and man it's the same thing mankind 
Um, we were created perfectly and we're going to get back to that. And this is like, if you love God, you're going to get that. Um, and stars are definitely, in my opinion, sort of how we get into this reality. And then I think, you know, we're going to get, you know, leveled up or, or for gamers out there, you know, translated or, you know, downloaded onto another file. And then we're going to get super boosted. That's what we're trying to promote. And, um, Less negativity, you know. The sun shines nice, and there's gardening, and people need to exercise. And reading, reading is another huge thing that we promote. Um, it's, reading is super important for the mind, you know. And today's age, it's getting so ridiculous, right? Yeah, I mean, that not too many people read anymore like they used to. I mean, some people their reading levels on the level of like a status update, a tweet, or you know, you know, they only know how to talk like someone would talk in a text message with you know, laugh out loud and abbreviated words, or even the fact that selfie got added to the dictionary back in twenty fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 you know that's that's what we do, and you know, I have full faith in the in the father the most high. And, um, you know, I'm another guy that, you know, to believe on the father and to hear him. And, you know, when you pray, you know, the most important thing to me is like accepting that you've been given that, that gift or whatever it is that you're praying for, expecting it to be done because you're not going to ask for something that's not in the will of your father. If you love God and you ask him into your life and you have situations that come up, if you ask him to lead you, you know, I can guarantee that you will have a better life in the end for it. That's that's pretty much the most important message I have today. That's a really good message and I guess we're coming down to like the final 8 minutes and I'm going to pray soon, but were those your closing thoughts? Yeah, just thanks for having me on. I Super enjoyed it. Thanks to everyone in the chat. Um, I'm sorry we don't all agree. Um, please come over to my channel anytime and show me what you've been shown and what you know. And if I can stand on more important truth, I can't wait to get there. I'm super humbled to meet everybody. Uh, thank you again. Thank you so much. That was, be upon us. it was very nice having you on. And thank you for sharing all that you shared with the parabolic teachings. And for anyone that's interested in his coming to Ronnie's channel, the Limitless channel, I put a link to it in the description box. Yeah, thank you. Um, I enjoyed it. It was really fun. You know, I can't wait for your next video and your next uh, your next hangout. Yeah, thank you. And with that being said. It's seven minutes till, but I'll go ahead and pray. And then if you guys have any questions or comments that you want to be addressed, I can address those before we close out. So, Father, I'd like to thank you again for another wonderful stream and for everyone that was able to join or listen in. And I just pray that everyone would continue to draw closer to you, be guided by you, and that they would have a wonderful week and that we'd also just come closer to the truth and closer to knowing you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. You're welcome. And um, I'm just looking back over in the chat and seeing if anyone has any last comments or words that they or questions they want to address. And I see that everyone's still kind of on the objects being possessed thing. That was something that, and the angels being stars as well. Yeah, there's lots of things that um, we talk about, you know, ultimately, you know, most of the questions that are asked, um, if I can't answer them, you pretty much, you know, have to ask the father. He's, he's the one that, that teaches us the best. Um, but I do believe the chemtrails are demonic, the whole entire movement, the, the feel of it, um, you know, break free of that, you know, be clean, be healthy, come back to the light. Don't fall into rabbit holes and stuff like that. But 
I'm just super thankful that you let me, you know, speak for all this time. No, it was, it was great having you on. And I mean, I agree with you that, you know, there is just a lot of fear that surrounds the whole Kim Trill uh, movement, like regardless of even people that believe that, you know, it's a hundred percent physical, there is a lot of just fear mongering that goes into it as well. And it can be like, distracting from like, studying out the word or even just having a positive outlook on life. If you're always worried about that. Yeah. And, and Jesus told us not to worry about the winds and the waves. He rebuked the storms, right? He's in all control. That's why I don't worry about, about the weather, right? With the whole, you know, they're militarizing, weaponizing the weather. And that's what we're here to fight against. We're here to, we're here to stop those storms if we can, right? I'm not saying we can move mountains, but if we have to try, we will try. This is kind of off topic, but um, what are your thoughts on what looks like a buildup to World War Three with Syria, Trump, and everyone's yeah. talking about it. Um, it? To me, it doesn't seem too surprising. There's always that perpetual threat yeah. that World War Three is going to happen, and I do think it's telling that all of this is taking place in this time period, given what I discussed last week about mid April, I wouldn't be too surprised, but I also, I don't know. It could just be more hearsay and more fear mongering. What do you yeah, there's think? Not, there's not too much evidence on nukes being real. Um, we've done some research. Galen Windsor actually eats a radioactive um, material and says that the whole nuclear power plant industry is a hoax and and proves it so we know that you know the biggest bomb they have is the moab and it's like 135 feet blast so you know you, you could blow up towns and you could burn things but you know really hand-to-hand -hand guns and men killing men is really what the demons of this place want um i do believe that a lot of the wars are, are rumors and um, there are there are places where people kill each other, and I think it's horrible. Um, you know, we're not supposed to kill anybody. It's right against the commandments, right? Um, but like I said, I'm not the judge of that. But I definitely think that it's all fear mongering. They're going to take war to satellites, and and we know that the only types of satellites that they have are actually high altitude balloons, um, Google Loon. There's many evidences out there of this. Um, so there's no nukes. So basically, and anyone that tried to attack the North American shores, you know, has three to 7,000 miles of sea to travel. So, you know, I, I could imagine a whole army, except for Russia. Russia could come through. But the funny thing is that the United States of America supposedly gave Russia all their plutonium, you know, all their nuclear weapon material. So that would be awfully weird if World War III was the United States and Russia. That's my take on that. And I'll, I'll stop. That's an interesting take, and I see that Nick C said, even if there is a war, so what, amen? Look up. Your redemption draws near, and I agree. With, I mean, regardless amen, of what amen. happens, it's, it's, it's prophecy. It's bound to happen, and that means we're closer to the coming. Second That's coming. the other thing. The, la the second part to that answer, really quick, is um, the Daniel's prophecy, the 70 years after the Reformation of Israel. I believe that is taking place. So retrospectfully, after Damascus is leveled, we should be able to say, well, that that prediction was correct with that scripture as well. Um, you know, this could be the end times, people, but we don't promote um, a date or an hour that we're going to see the return. But we just know that we have to pr promote the gospel to the entire world um, and all of the gospel, not just the 66 book canon. Well, thank you again, um, Ronnie, and thank you, everyone in the chat. We're like right at 8.59 and it'd be interesting to see with the weeks progressing what happens and um, it was a pleasure as always chatting with you guys and also having you on, Ronnie, and I'll talk to you guys next Monday live and check out this coming Wednesday's video. God bless.